Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm back in my 1.81 test world to demo a new mod. Uh, I just started playing with it, and it's pretty neat, so I wanted to do a tutorial on the things that I've learned so far about it. This mod is Railcraft. It's uh, another Minecraft Forge mod, so it works pretty well with Buildcraft, Industrialcraft, and all the other Forge mods out there. And it's a pretty cool mod. It's pretty much completely reworking how minecarts and rails work in this game. So uh, basically, it adds a ton of items here, and if I scroll down through my crafting book to the spot where all the rails are, here I start adding some of the blocks. There's detector blocks, um, which detect things uh, like carts on the rails. Um, there's loaders and unloaders. Um, there's an elevator rail. There's um, a crowbar for using for manipulating rails, and it kind of changes the way that you build rails. Um, you need to get some wooden ties to get a wooden rail bed and then you use that wooden rail button recipes to get all kinds of different rails. You've got boarding rails, holding rails, control rails, one-way rails, you get the point. Um, there's a ton of crazy stuff going on here, and I'm going to try and cover it all and explain the different types of rails that are available in Railcraft um, and how to use them. Uh, there's also a bunch of machines and signals and all this other crazy stuff that I haven't totally figured out yet. So the first episode of the Railcraft Mod Spotlight tutorial will basically be on the different types of rails that are available. And then I'll probably do a second episode that'll cover, cover the different uh, machines, uh, they're called devices, and some of the other cool stuff you can do with signaling. So why don't I get started showing you Railcraft. Alright, so the first thing you guys are going to see is your standard Minecraft rail. However, the recipe has changed if you're using Railcraft to come in line with all the other rails that are available. Um, the first item you need to create is this creosote oil. This oil kind of is, is a component in the basic wooden rails that you can make here. And in order to do that, you simply take a piece of coal or charcoal and smelt it in a furnace. And one piece of coal will give you three creosote oils as you can see here. Pretty simple and straightforward. Next, you're going to want to open up a crafting table and create some wooden slabs. Place down your wooden slabs on the th bottom three and one creosote oil on top and you'll get a wooden tie. So why don't I get myself a few more of these right now. Whoops. There you go wooden ties. Now wooden ties come together to get rail beds and all you have to do is place four of these in a s square like that and you've got a wooden rail bed. That's your basic function to get a rail. Next we take our wooden rail bed and we're going to need some iron and if we place six iron along the sides here like this you'll see we're getting 24 rails. This is just your standard rail from Minecraft. This is nothing special. It's pretty much how you run your minecarts in the game now if you're not using Minecraft, Railcraft. So why don't I get myself a minecart here and just run it along. Ta-da! Nothing special. So that's your standard rail, and that's how you make it in Railcraft. The next recipe to see is the powered rail. And again, this is just like the powered rail that you have in standard Minecraft. I'm not doing anything terribly new yet. But again, you have to use these wooden rail beds. And you'll get eight powered rails. And as you guys know from vanilla Minecraft, if you've got a powered rail and you've got some standard rails, and you place your minecart on it and apply a redstone signal, the minecart will be propelled. Again, nothing new, but just showing you guys for the completeness sake of this mod spotlight. Now one of the tools we're going to start needing to use is a crowbar, and it's pretty simple. Three iron bars like that give you a crowbar. And we're probably going to be using this a bit in the future, so let's just note how to make the crowbar. The next rail I want to show you guys is the boarding rail. Now you know how to make a pressure plate, pretty simple and straightforward. Place your wooden rail bed underneath that with some redstone dust on the top, and gold along the sides. This is a modified version of the powered rail. Here's the boarding rail and let's go into how it works. Now I've laid out a basic rail track here with a normal powered rail. This is just your standard powered rail. I'm going to place my minecart on it to show you how it works when you have a normal powered rail. If 
the powered rail is unpowered, it will stop and hold on to the minecart as it passes over. However, it can be pushed by enemies or yourself to move it off the rail. Also, once that guy has lost power, if you apply a redstone signal, it's not going to send the cart anywhere, because the cart is not moving already. And powered rails will only push the cart if it's already moving, or if behind the cart there's a solid block like that. So that's how you would create a normal system with your minecart track. Now that there's a solid block behind it, redstone signal pushes the minecart. Pretty cool. Now the difference with the boarding rail, so if we replace this normal powered rail with a boarding rail and don't give it power, first off you'll notice that there's an arrow pointing in that direction. And if I hit this guy with the crowbar, it's going to change the arrow to be pointing in that direction. So let's continue with our tutorial pointing in this direction. I'm going to go ahead and place my minecart back on my mine track and give it a push. It stopped on the boarding rail, and no amount of pushing by me or any enemies will move this thing. It's going to just stay right where it is. And when it receives a redstone signal, it'll push the minecart in the direction that the arrow is facing. Let's turn this guy around and push him in this direction. Again, he stops on the rail, and if I apply a redstone signal, it moves in the direction that the arrow is facing. So that's how the boarding rail works. And of course you wouldn't be using redstone torches, probably a lever or a switch or a button or something like that. That was the boarding rail. Let's move on to a very similar rail, and again I'm going to need another pressure plate. This one, we put the pressure plate in the middle, the rail bend on top, and the redstone on the bottom, with gold on the sides. This is the holding rail which you'll note looks very similar to the boarding rail. Let's go replace the boarding rail that we have on this track with a holding rail. Now the holding rail, as you can see, has arrows in both directions. So how does this work? Well, we place our minecart on here and give it a push, and it gets held just like before. When we activate a redstone signal, it's going to shoot off just like before. However, it shot off in the direction that the minecart was initially traveling so that if it's coming in this direction with the holding rail it's going to go off in the direction it was already traveling which is again that direction now so the difference between the holding rail and the boarding rail is that the holding rail causes the minecart to continue traveling in the direction it was going before where the boarding rail only has one direction that it can send the minecart in next up I'm going to show you guys the control rail if you craft it as shown with two gold and four iron and two redstone on the top and bottom, we've got a control rail. Now if I place down the control rail, first off it'll appear powered, because it is by default. It's automatically powered. And you can see it's got these arrows pointing in that direction. If I apply a redstone signal to it, it reverses the direction of the arrows. And removing the redstone signal puts it back in the first direction again. So you could cause this to switch with a lever or something like that. Now what this rail does is, it gives a slight boost to the minecart. So why don't I go ahead and put down a couple of these, because the boost is very small and hardly noticeable. But what do you expect? You're not having to apply power to these guys. They have their own power running through them. So why don't I just give that a small push, and you'll see that it accelerates the minecart just a little bit in that direction. Pretty neat. Now, if I go ahead and give this guy a strong push from this direction, it's going to get slowed down and the direction gets reversed. So the control rails kind of force your minecart to move in the right direction. And if a minecart's coming down the rail in the wrong direction, it'll kind of spin it around and force it to go back the other way. And that's the control rail. Next up, we've got the detector rail, which is again the vanilla Minecraft item. Um, the detector rail works just like the detector rail in vanilla Minecraft. Um, and you just saw the recipe there. Detector rails emit a redstone signal whenever a cart is passing over them. So, we go ahead and place our minecart in there. Ta-da! And that's your standard detector rail functionality. However, Railcraft adds a lot more options to the detector rail, and I'm going to go into those in a little bit. So stay tuned for the other things detector rails can do if you're using Railcraft. But I just wanted you guys to see that the recipe has changed. 
Next up is a really neat rail. It's called the elevator rail. And guess what it does? <laughs> it works like an elevator, of course. Take an elevator rail, pattern shown here, and we've got our little minecart track set up. So why don't I just run some cobblestone blocks up like so. And I'm going to continue along like this. And I'm going to set up a minecart up here, a minecart track. I'm going to place my elevator rails up along here, like so. And the last component of this is we need to supply power to the top rail track. So I'm just going to place a redstone here and a redstone torch here. And you can see that by applying redstone power to the top track, it applies power to all the tracks below it. Now, when the track is powered, it causes minecarts to go up. And when the track is unpowered, it causes minecarts to go down. Simply place your minecart like so. And you'll notice that this does not connect because this minecart track is actually taking up this block. That's just the way Minecraft works. So, you know, that's why the railcraft track here doesn't look like it's connecting. Um, this is actually occupying the block here. But that's the way Minecraft works, vanilla. So, go ahead and place down your minecart and give it a little push. And it'll get caught up and shot upwards and along the track up there. Now, obviously, it didn't have anywhere to go, so it just fell. But that's how the elevator rail works. And you'll notice, like I said, that if you put your minecart here and try to push it down, it won't go down unless we turn off our redstone signal. Now, with the redstone signal off, now with the redstone signal off, we can simply put our minecart down, give it a push, and it should come down. There we go. Just needed a little bit more push. So it just went down the minecart, and it can continue along. And that's how the elevator rail works. Next up is a pretty basic rail. Um, wooden rail bed in the middle, surrounded by iron, gives you a junction rail. What the junction rail does is it allows you to place minecarts um, that overlap each other, some railways. So we can run them like so. And now you can run your minecart in this direction, or you can run it in this direction. This really is impossible in vanilla Minecraft. So that's a neat add-on for Railcraft. Next up is the one-way rail. Now this works kind of like control rails, except instead of emitting and causing it to move up a little bit and speed up, uh, this guy will work like a normal rail um, when unpowered. So it does not add a boost to the minecarts like the control rail does. It just allows them to continue at their normal speed. However, you can see there's an arrow on it facing that direction. And when you apply a redstone signal, again, the car continues along at the normal speed. However, if you try and push it the wrong direction, it'll slow it down and not let it pass. So it kind of forces it to go in the other direction. And that's what a one-way rail does, is it kind of forces it to go in one direction. Similar to the way a um, control rail works, but a little bit different. Next up, I'm going to cover switch rails. Now, those of you who have played with minecarts in the past in Minecraft know that the only way to do a switch rail is to be going one direction and then go either left or right. And you switch it with a lever. But you cannot, for example, be going straight, let's say like this, and then moving along straight and head to the right. Not too easily, of course. There's funny ways to do it, but you can really only switch between left and right. So the switch rail in Railcraft allows you to do this. So let's reset up the system and do it the right way. Switch rails are crafted as shown. And all you got to do is place them down. And then you can either go straight or to the right. And if you want to hit them with a crowbar, you can kind of reorient them. So now this thing is going off to the right or straight. Now, unfortunately, you cannot switch the switch track with just a lever. You actually have to craft a motor. So why don't I show you how to craft that guy now. 
I'm actually going to hold off on showing you the recipe for this switch motor because it's a little in depth and it also goes into signaling. So for now, just note that you need a switch motor to do this and you just hook up your lever and now the switch motor will allow you to change the way the track goes. So let's see it like so. We can either push it straight and it'll keep going straight or we give it an alternate direction and push it here and it goes off to the right. Pretty cool. Now this motor, like I said, has some more advanced functions that I'll get into later with signaling. Next up I'm going to show you guys a couple more rails that are a little bit different than the ones you've been seeing so far. These are called speed rails, and speed rails allow minecarts to travel three times faster than their maximum speed otherwise. So you can get some really fast rails going on here. The only catch is that these rails can only allow these things to travel in a straight line, um, and they need to be slowed down before they're allowed to transition back to normal rails. Um, you also shouldn't allow minecarts to collide when they're traveling at high speed. Um, any one of those three things, either the minecart, you know, getting a turn or the, uh, you know, leaving the rail without slowing down will cause the minecart to explode and bad things to happen. So, in order to craft it, we just need to get ourselves some stone slabs and place them along the bottom with an iron ingot on top. So this is a similar recipe to the wooden tie, but this is the stone tie, and it uses iron. Now, we can use four stone ties, so let's get those. And a square to create a stone rail bed. Okay. Now you're going to need two stone rail beds in order to make this uh, item that I'm going to show you guys. So I'm going to give myself another one here. And you're also going to need an iron block. So if I do it like this, you get your, I'm sorry, a gold block. So you get your gold block there, your stone ties, and some iron along the sides. And that'll give you 32 high speed rails. Another option here is to take four standard rails, a piece of gold, and one stone tie to get four high speed rails. So whichever recipe you like better, go ahead and use it. And that'll give you your high speed rails. So I'm just laying down some high speed rails here. And I'm going to put some normal rails on this side. Maybe one more normal rail just right here. And some more high speed rails. And then I'm going to put a normal rail again. So let's check out how these guys work. Now there's two more types of speed rail that I'm going to have to build in order to show you guys how this works. So let's open up our crafting table, take our stone rail bed, remember you need to use stone rail beds for any high speed railing that you're going to be doing, and build it like this with redstone on the bottom. This will give you a high speed booster rail. Uh, this will boost carts to high speed when it has power, and it will slow them down to normal speed when it does not have power. Okay, so let's put that down there somewhere. And the other guy I want to show you is a little bit different. This one, the redstone goes on top, and the stone rail bed goes on the bottom. And this is a high-speed transition rail. Now, the difference between the two is that high-speed booster rails will speed it up when it's got power and slow it down when it doesn't have redstone power. These are directional rails, and they'll only boost carts in one direction when they're powered carts traveling in the opposite direction will be slowed to normal minecart speeds. And we can see the difference here. So for example, we can face this guy and you can see little arrows pointing in that direction. And if we give it a good old whack with the crowbar, it'll change the direction of it. So now it's facing in this direction. So this is a one-way speed ramp so that it can go this way. Otherwise, we could just use the standard one, and this will only speed it up if it's got power, and it'll slow it down if it doesn't have power. So it's up to you which one you want to use. For now, I'm going to use the directional ones, and I'm going to apply a redstone signal to it. Now, it's boosting it in this direction, and if a minecart's traveling this way, it'll slow it down. And I'm going to put one just the same on this end. This way, I want it to go this direction. That way, when the minecart comes on here, it'll boost into high speed mode and then slow down to normal mode. And I'll just put one of these guys like this. This is the same way. When it hits this track, it'll boost into high speed mode and then slow down. And I'll just put this guy down here like that. So let's give it a try, shall we? 
just grab ourselves a minecart. And remember, it's going to travel about three times as fast. Ta-da! Now, obviously, I have a bit of a track here, so why don't I go ahead and put some more speed boosts here. So now I've got more speed boosts going in that direction. Why don't I go ahead and run a cart along it and see what happens? See how much faster it accelerates. Now, this is a pretty short track, so you can't really see how fast it can go, but just keep in mind that this guy is going to travel pretty darn fast. And that's the speed rail. Again, it travels three times faster than the maximum speed of a normal rail. I wonder what happens if I don't slow it down, though. Hmm. Let's go ahead and push it along. What's going to happen? Oh, nothing. Let's increase the length of the speed rail to give the minecart an opportunity to really speed up before it gets to the end. And remember, I don't have one of those reverser hangs here to slow it down. I wonder what happens if the minecart's going really fast and hits the end. Oh! Yeah, you definitely don't want to forget to create a slowdown ramp. So as you guys can see, there's quite a lot of things that this mod adds. Railcraft gives you a lot of different options for creating rails, and I really haven't even scratched the surface just yet. Uh, these are just the rails that have been added to the game. Uh, keep in mind there are wooden rails. Um, You'll want to check them out on the wiki, but they basically just move a little bit slower than your standard rails. I think it's more for cosmetics than anything else, but I might be wrong about that. But go ahead and check out the wiki to see the uh, wooden rails that are available. But this does cover, for the most part, all the rails that are added to the game by Railcraft. Now keep in mind that there are, like I said earlier, some devices and some all kinds of like components that do all kinds of really neat and tricky things. Um, you're going to want to stay tuned for part two of this mod spotlight, where I'll go into some of the devices and some of the really neat stuff you can do. This mod also incorporates with Buildcraft and lets you um, create carts that can be fed items through pipes. And you can also create a liquid cart which can transport liquids for you. Uh, and it's used using the Buildcraft um, tanks. So stay tuned for part two of the Railcraft mod spotlight. Hope you guys enjoyed checking this out. And I'll catch y'all later. Take it easy.